Kerbal the Space Program 2 is finally available and it's been a long wait hasn't it? In this video then we're going to dive into everything you need to know about early access. If you want to know about the current state of performance, what type of content is currently in the game and what's upcoming, what's the current news and all the latest stuff then this is certainly the place to be. Let's start with the latest information on performance then. Now, just yesterday, the developers posted on the forums an update to the system requirements. They've amended the minimum system requirements. They've changed the graphics card to a GTX 10, uh, 1070 Ti. This is a slight downgrade from the original minimum of an RTX 2060. Now, quite naturally, there's been a little bit of concern about these relatively high specs for, well, minimum system requirements. They're quite a bit higher than many people were anticipating. The developers have gone into some details as to the reason for this, and we'll uh, talk about that right here. So the developers say they're working on two things currently to help improve performance. The first is terrain optimization. I'm curious if this is connected to some of the relatively low frame rates that we're seeing around planets. The other area they're working on improving is fuel flow optimization. Now I have noticed a problem here, specifically with Delta V calculations, as they do mention it in that post. And you can see that happening very much here. Anything that dramatically affects Delta V, like the stabilizers here, watch what happens to the frame rate. Currently 115 frames per second, and instantly it tanks right down to uh, sub 20 frames per second. In fact, uh, sub 10 frames per second occasionally there. Not very good. With that said, I don't feel that this is game breaking and there's a very specific reason for that. It only happens in certain circumstances, so when applying new uh, engines or applying stabilizers, things like that, it can also happen on launch and sometimes during stack separation. During stack separation or during launch, it only lasts for a few moments and during the vehicle assembly building, well, it will last for quite a while, but it's easily fixed simply by switching out to a different area of the game. So. Head over to the training center, for example, and then back to vehicle assembly and everything will be fine again. Of course, though, that doesn't make this perfect. It's far from ideal, in fact, and is still a certainly a problem. But that said, the developers have said they're aware of it. So hopefully they will fix this sooner rather than later. I really am hoping for the sooner. Now, for context, I've been playing this on my own PC over the past few days. A private division did send over a Steam key for me. And I'm running this on a Ryzen 7 5800X and an RTX 4090, so no slouch. At any rate, let's read the developer comments on exactly what appears to be going on here. So they say, some of you may have noticed that adding a high number of engines noticeably impacts frame rate. This has to do with CPU intensive fuel flow and Delta V update calculations that are exasperated when multiple engines are pulling from a common fuel source. The current system is both working and stable, but there is clearly a room for performance improvement. We are re-evaluating this system to improve its scalability. So as you just saw within the clip I showed, it's not just down to fuel flow and engines, but also down to pretty much anything that can dramatically affect Delta V. So uh, for example, as you saw, adding the stabilizers on did dramatically hit those frame rates. Now, as I've said, I don't see this as a major problem, at least not personally, as there are some workarounds but other people may feel a bit different. Either way, I feel it's very important to highlight these issues so that everyone knows what is going on and there's a very clear picture about that. Now, the developers have gone on to say that this is early access. We will have to expect uh, things like this occurring. And essentially, they are putting in sub-optimized parts of the game so that they can add in other parts of the game that they want players to uh, experience. So, for a while, it's going to be a part of the entire early access process. And with that in mind, here's a little table on screen from the developers of how they generally implement content. Now, I also want to touch on another issue here related to performance. The issue we just spoke about was the performance dips. So where the game suddenly and sometimes unexpectedly drops down to a very low frame rate, sometimes 20 frames per second, sometimes 10 frames per second. But those issues are only occasional. The other issue of performance is general performance. Now, this is something I'll have a closer look at in another video over the coming days, so uh, don't jump to any final conclusions on what you're seeing here. But this is running on my other PC, a Ryzen 7 3700X and an RTX 3080. 
And you can see that the frame rates tend to hover around the 30, sometimes 40 frames per second. We're running at 4K here, so above what uh, Private Division are really recommending, they suggest 1440p for this graphics card, but nonetheless we're running at 4K here at high settings. But again, I really don't want you to draw too many conclusions from this. I'll have a closer look at this over the coming days on a variety of different PCs. Okay, so with the somewhat sticky subjects out of the way, let's move on to the more fun and more interesting subjects, and that's the game itself. Now, I have released a couple of videos over the previous days, specifically one on my thoughts and impressions from my initial play session of Kerbal Space Program 2. You can see that linked on the screen right here. I'll also link it in the video description. Now, I have been having a lot of fun with KSP2. It's a game I'm really enjoying. Despite the few problems that we're encountering, it does seem to be heading in a very good direction, at least based on this very early release. So on the screen right here, we can see the roadmap. It doesn't contain any specific dates, so we don't know yet when this content is going to be released. We do know roughly what order it's coming in and what to expect. The big hitters are colonies, interstellar and exploration, and of course, multiplayer. Now, these are the things that are really going to separate KSP2 from KSP1. These are very much big deals. So here's a brief overview. Colonies is essentially, to all intents and purposes, base building. You'll be able to build bases out there on a variety of planets in different star systems within the galaxy. A large part of this will be resource gathering and resource management. Now this is something I did briefly talk to the developers about a few weeks ago, and essentially players will have to manually go out there and collect resources. Once they've done the initial manual journey, they will be able to then automate it. It also seems players will be able to have multiple colonies across the galaxy, each managing and distributing a different variety of resources. Next up, we have Interstellar. This will be the ability to travel to different star systems. We know there's going to be two new star systems in addition to the Kabola system. Then we have Exploration, and this seems to tie into both Interstellar as well as Colonies. It seems that it's at this point that resource gathering will actually come online. So maybe when Colonies first emerge, it will be perhaps sandboxy, hard to know. But resource gathering yet coming at a later date, along with that third star system. And then the aspect that I know quite a lot of people are waiting for, multiplayer. Here, players will be able to cooperatively work together in order to achieve a certain goal. So essentially, each player will act as their own distinct space agency. But we're told that won't be the only way to play. Judging by the fact that the Space Center on Kerbin has four launch pads, it seems that multiplayer will also be able to work out of a single Space Center. Additionally, it's also mentioned that players will be able to work together competitively as well. Now, perhaps the aspect that players are going to be most interested in for now is early access, the initial launch. What can you actually play today? Well, today we have the entire Kerbal star system. So that's all the planets we've uh, come to know and love. And you can play within this star system in the sandbox mode. There's currently no career mode and no science gathering or tech tree progression. So within sandbox mode, there's a whole load of parts that you can be getting on with. I counted around about 350 different parts, in fact. So you're about to build a huge range of ships, planes, as well as other vehicles. And you're about to use these to travel to absolutely any of the planets and moons within the Kerbal star system. So uh, plenty to be getting on with there, a lot of different planets to land on, and a lot of different terrain to uh, check out. But all that said, make no mistake, this is a bare bones release, and Private Division are making no secret of that. There's a lot of content still to come down the line, and currently a lot of content still missing. The experience we have today is well-rounded and you will certainly enjoy it. But you may also feel that it is somewhat lacking, especially for the price point of $50. However, everyone is certainly going to have different thoughts on that. For me, I'm quite happy with what we've got at the moment, just so long as all the other content does come along and doesn't really take too long. Although that said, I'm not overly impressed by the current price point. To be fair though, I have had a lot of fun with KSP2 Assembling the variety of rockets has been a nice experience, and generally speaking, although there are some bugs and some oh, strange things missing I'll talk about in just a moment, I have had a nice experience with the game, and everything seems to flow pretty nicely. Now, one of those strange things missing that I just want to briefly touch on here is the manoeuvres. 
Maneuvers I found to be somewhat fiddly. I do like the interactions with the Maneuver node. That seems to be quite a bit improved over at KSP1. One thing I do feel is missing, and I this just may be me. It may be in the game, and I'm just completely unable to find it. So if you do find it's in the game, please do let me know in the comments section below, because perhaps it's just me being a blind and dumb and completely missing it as it seems something far too obvious to be missing, and that is the Maneuver Tool from KSP1. This was extremely useful. It was good for planning a fine, uh, fine tuning your maneuvers, and, well, the KSP2 just doesn't seem to have it. That, to me at least, seems to be a very strange omission, especially for the uh, early stages of the game, when many players are jumping in for the first time and would perhaps like the ability to have improved control over their maneuver planning. But who knows, maybe it's hidden away somewhere that I haven't yet found, or maybe it's on the way very soon, or perhaps otherwise some developer has mentioned somewhere why it's not in the game. Very strange, as for whatever reason, I just can't find any details out about this particular aspect. The final thing I want to touch on are tutorials. Now, KSP2 really wants to help newbies with getting involved in the game, and this has been especially helpful for me, as I'm by no means a KSP expert. KSP2 comes with a bunch of tutorials. I do think more are going to be added in over the course of development, but these are really good. They do explain the basics in a very easy to understand way. So if you're new to KSP, don't worry. You're about to jump in and get going in pretty much no time. It also means that you need absolutely no experience of KSP prior to this. You don't need to have played KSP1. You can jump straight in with this game. So there we have it. That's pretty much everything you need to know about the current state of early access. This will change, of course, over the coming days and the coming weeks as the developers release more updates. So if you want to keep updated with everything to do with KSP2, you know what to do. Meanwhile, on the screen right here, you can see a bit of an overview of my previous playthroughs and uh, other thoughts and impressions on KSP. So do check that video out. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys and girls next time.